call the uh, Delaware County Commissioner's meeting to order. It's Monday, January 24th. Time is uh, 9.02. Um, let's open the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Steve, could you call the roll, please? Mr. King. Here. Miss Reagan. Mr. Henry. Here. Mr. Brooke. Here. Very good. Miss uh, Reagan is joining us via Zoom. Um, so she's asked me to uh, preside over the meeting today. Um, under appointments, we have ECI Regional Planning District, three appointments. Make a motion for James King, Ryan Ballard, and Marta Moody to be reappointed to the EC ECI Regional Planning District. Second. All right, we have those three appointments. A uh, motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Next is the Board of Health, um, Dr. John Peterson and Vicki Mitchell. Is that correct, Mr. Bain? Make a motion that we appoint Dr. <coughs> Peterson and Vicki Mitchell to the Board of Health. Second. A mo motion and a second for those uh, appointments. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Next is the fair board. Um, there's a vacancy on the fair, fair board and they're requesting Dan White be placed back on the fair board. Make a motion to appoint Dan White on the fair board. Second. We have a motion and a second for that appointment as well. Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Next we have Mr. The President, Mr. President, could I interrupt you just for a minute? Absolutely. Um, Ms. Moody indicated that um, Ricky Sipes' term is uh, ended on December 31st. I had for the 20, for 22, but it was 21 on the plan commission. So, and she has indicated a, a request to stay on the plan commission. I would entertain a motion for Ricky Sipes to uh, remain on the planning commission. So moved. <coughs> second. A motion and a second for that appointment. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Next is the approval of minutes for January 3rd, 2022 commissioner's meeting and the January 7th, 2022 special meeting. I'll make a motion to approve both minutes. Second. We have a motion for both sets of minutes and a second. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Uh, abstain. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. All right, next we have uh, presentations to the commissioner. Um, Dan Watson. Hello, I'm Dan Watson. Um, I represent the firm Beam Longest and Neff um, engineering firm, and I'm just here to introduce myself and our firm and to request to be considered for future infrastructure projects in Delaware County. Um, a little bit about uh, our firm. We are one of the oldest family owned engineering firms in the state. We're headquartered in Castleton, Indiana and we provide a full range of engineering services, roads, bridges, right of way, um, environmental, you know, you know, about just about anything that, we, that you would need in the engineering firm. And a little bit about myself, um, I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Indiana, and I was raised in Delaware County, uh, went to school in DeSoto, Albany, graduated from Delta High School in 1979. So I'm familiar with Delaware County. I'm a local person. Um, I currently reside in Dunkirk. Um, I recently retired as county engineer in Jay County after 32 years and went to work for Beam Longest and Neff uh, January of last year. And I currently reside in Dunkirk. Um, I'm on the Board of Works in Dunkirk. I recently was mayor of Dunkirk for four years. I also served nine years on the Dunkirk City Council. So I bring that 
uh, expertise with the and familiar familiarity with the area to you guys and just request that we be considered for future work in Delaware County. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Contracts or agreements for approval, uh, Delaware County Health Department grant, uh, Jamie Bain. Good morning, commissioners. Jamie Bain, administrator of the health department. Um, the grant I have for you guys today is a new um, grant from the state health department. They call it the Workforce Development COAG grant. This is additional COVID-related funding. I'm seeking, basically under the um, grants ordinance, ordinance, I'm seeking your permission to apply for it. <clears throat> I believe it was provided. I don't know if everyone had a chance to look through that yet. I'll it's a pleasure of the commissioners. I'll make a motion to have Jamie go ahead and apply for the grant. We have a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Next is the uh, Delaware County High Tech Crimes Unit Interlocal Agreement with the City of Muncie. Good morning. Uh, Eric Hoffman, prosecuting attorney. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as you know, the um, prosecutor's office was awarded I've been losing my voice for two days <clears throat> uh, awarded a sum of money from the state of Indiana to uh, operate and establish a high-tech crime unit um, and it's going to be staffed by an executive director that I've already hired and a police officer full-time from the city of Muncie and then one from the sheriff's department um, with this in our local agreement um, the agreement between the city and I would be that um, the full-time sergeant from the investigations division of the Muncie Police Department would be assigned full-time to my office to the high-tech crime unit uh, and in exchange we'd pay the city fifty thousand dollars. Don did you look over that agreement? Yes I did have a chance to look at it and Eric did a fine job of drafting it. Thank you John. <laughs> This lawyer thing might work out for you, Eric. <laughs> as long as I can keep my voice. <laughs> Sometimes that's an asset, not having a voice as a lawyer. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve the interlocal agreement with the city of Muncie and a second. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Just for your own, there is a resolution, which is resolution 20. 2022-02, which is a resolution approving um, this high-tech agreement. Uh, so if you would adopt that, then you can go ahead and finalize this. Well, I'll make a motion that we do resolution number 2022-002. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution for the uh, high-tech crime unit um, agreements. Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Thank you. Very much. Have a good day. <clears throat> so we're doing the interlocal, John, too, also. You so. signed the interlocal, but the resolution approves the interlocal, so, yeah. right. Okay, next we have uh, department heads and elected officials. Are any department head or elected officials wish to present today? I could have done it when you did the appointment, but I'll just get up and say I'm Melanie Marshall with Delaware County Fair Board. Thank you so much for putting Dan back on the board. We have a full complement now. We don't have any openings currently on the board, and we so appreciate all the support that we get from you on a constant and continual basis. Thank you. Marta Moody from the Plan Commission office, and I just wanted to distribute uh, a copy of the um, 2021 building permit uh, summaries, number of permits, number <coughs> of registrations, revenues, and we did it so that you've got a three-year three comparison. 
And so I just wanted to hand that out to the folks that they're adding it. Okay. Thank you. We've already done. We don't yeah. get one. Okay. Yeah, we're doing another one. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Marty. <coughs> Thank you, Marta. <coughs> Thank you. And Sherry, I'll email it, the report to you. Okay. Marta, you might want to just give us some highlights because I know your staff's been very, very busy and we appreciate all the good help. Okay. Yes, I will. Um, you can see with the three year comparison that um, in 2019, the total permits were 480. 2020, they were 787, <coughs> and last year they were 858 permits issued. And the total revenue, like in 2019, it was 60,000 plus. Last year, it was $342,082.41. So, yeah, we've been really busy. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Marta. Uh -huh. <coughs> Shannon, can I introduce our intern? Sure. That this is Marshall Morgan. He's a political science major at Ball State, and he's interning in the auditor's office this semester. He wanted to learn the financial side of government, so I wanted to take an opportunity to introduce him. Very good. Welcome, Marshall. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, <coughs> Yes. I'd like to thank you for uh, introducing Mr. Morgan and uh, for starting an uh, intern from Ball State. We need to do more of that around here, and uh, I, I really commend you for that. So thank you very much. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Very good. John, do you, do you have something? I do. Um, I sent to you <coughs> at the last meeting. The uh, Board of Commissioners adopted a motion to enter, to create a moratorium on the introduction and filing of any solar farm applications with the Plan Commission. And I told you I would get that to you for a, a resolution. So I sent you a resolution, which would be Resolution 2022-003, which <coughs> creates that moratorium effective January 3rd at the meeting where the motion was adopted and goes until February 22nd, which is your meeting after the plan commission considers the um, various amendments and whatever those are for your review. So it's just a written confirmation of what the motion was that you did in uh, Jan on January. Marta? Yeah, I just wanted to announce, um, we'll be putting this on the website later today, but the plan commission meeting is set for February 3rd at 6 o'clock, and it will be at the Justice Center at 3100 South Tillotson Avenue. And that will also be, the information dealing with that will be posted on the website later today as well. Very good. Thank you. So we have a resolution on the table, resolution 2022-003 confirming the um, uh, moratorium. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion to approve the resolution and a second. Roll call, please. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Okay, any other department heads or elected officials? All right, we have the uh, weights and measures report. Everybody received that okay? And then we have um, payment of claims, $1,693,000. $993.35. Motion to approve payment of claims. Second. We have a motion to approve the claims and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Abstain. Mr. Henry. Yes. And then do we have uh, do we have any ARP claims? There's nothing. No. There is none at no. this time. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Next, it is uh, time for public comment. Um, everyone will have three minutes to, uh, to speak. Um, the first is, uh, forgive me if I um, screw this up, Miss Curdy, I believe. Is, uh, it's uh, K-R-T-T-E-Y, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You want to speak?
Good morning. I'm Kathy Kirtley, and I'm a concerned resident of the Gaston area that really could possibly have many acres of solar panels put in our backyard. At your last meeting, we presented many excellent reasons for you to reconsider and reevaluate your solar ordinance that you easily approved in October of 21. The moratorium that was put in place has given our growing concerned group more time to research and study further the truly dire consequences that have been proven predictable. I have to say that I used to think solar and wind energy was a great answer to having clean energy, but in the last five weeks of reading documentations of inefficient and dangerous outcomes, it says we do not have the best technology yet to put these energy methods in place for a long term. We are here today hoping to encourage you all to investigate the proven facts that are prevalent all over the U.S. and the world. History doesn't lie. Don't just take the word of the marketers for these proposed deals. Profit is their only bottom line, and please don't be misled by a greedy few. Green energy is needed, but please be smart to implement and put these in the right places. Do we want Delaware County to soon be known as the gullible county that let industrial solar panels take huge bites out of our highly productive farmland? Do we want to squash the next two generations of young farmers that they won't even have farmland to actually produce our food? Um, I, I don't understand the I know the government is funding much, much, much of this to encourage solar panels, wind, alternate energy. But then it comes down to us at a local level to actually decide where all that's going to go. And using up our farmland is just not it. We need food. We will always need food. And that's just part of the, the negative equation to that. We've got to find places to put this solar energy in non-productive farmland. So we're counting on you guys to do what's right for the majority. That's what you've been elected for. And please show us voters that you can use your best judgment on all of these huge decisions coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Cole Stevens. Yeah, I'm Cole Stevens. Um, I'm here for support of the solar panels. My family, uh, business partners have signed our land up for it. And um, <coughs> we want to be a good neighbor. Uh, I've tried reaching out and having serious conversations, just sit down, open conversation. I agree there's going to be opposition to this, uh, and I welcome that. Um, but we need to have open conversations. I tried speaking at one of their meetings, and I was told that I was not allowed to speak. They don't want to hear both sides. They want to hear what they have to say. Um, I have a few things here that I've uh, researched on my own. Uh, from Doug Childs. He's the CEO of Utilities District, Western Indiana Rural Electric Co-op. Um, and he says the really what's happening is that economics of the whole power business have changed so much that generating by power by coal is not the cheapest way to go by a long shot. Um, all these power plants are being shut down because they pollute. Where does our power come on? We need to have uh, a reliable source. Um, they also um, state that uh, consumers won't see their rates increase, which would happen if they continue to rely on coal-fired units. The idea, if you build wind and solar, you have to build natural gas plants to back it up. And frankly, you still have to do to some degree, but eight, ten years from now, you're not going to have to do that. He said it's possible for consumers to even see small savings start around 2023 with larger savings possible 10 to 15 down, years down the road. 
So I think it's a, you know, it brings in money to us as landowners. It brings in money to the government. It brings in money to the school. And I just think there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about the abatements and how they work and, um, you know, and how it's going to benefit the schools. And it really does. Uh, that's, that's why we continue to, to support it is because I think five, ten years down the road, just like hog barns, nobody mentions anything about them. They, you know, I agree. Some people have some concerns right now, as I would if I hadn't. We've had years to look over these and research ourselves. You guys have had just a few months. I mean, and so that's why I feel that, you know, I'm strong in my conviction that this is a good thing for the community. And in five or ten years, they will see the same thing. So, thank you. Thank you. Next is, uh, I believe, Jackie Sheets. Um, concerning these solar panels, if they catch on fire, have you seen a video of them on fire? Have any of you watched that? Nobody has. I can share that to you now if you'd like, or I can send it through you to email. Would you like to see it now? You can email our uh, county addresses, okay. please. Okay. It's pretty scary. Um, my biggest concern with that is if one catches on fire and your setback is kept at 100 feet, my, my house will be on fire. <laughs> I want you to consider making that setback at a longer distance and match Grant County and one other county, and they are setting theirs at uh, 1,320 feet. So if that setback can be further into the field, my fear will go down, okay? Because 100 feet, if you haven't measured that off, you should, okay? Please consider that because we have to live out here in that. <coughs> um, but I will send that to you. And something else to consider, these panels um, recycling is not a pretty sight because they're not recycling. They can't do that. The cost of recycling them is way higher. So they've been, they're chipping them off and dumping them off into landfills in poor countries. I can email you the videos of, you know, some pictures of that as well. So there's a lot to consider and I hope that you will consider everything. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Mr. Schroeder, Tom Schroeder. Morning, commissioners. Um, thank you for your time here this morning. My name is um, Tom Scoder. Um, I am a representative of Invenergy with the proposed Meadow Forge solar project. Um, I just wanted to, to take a little bit of time this morning and you know just provide a little bit more background on, on why we're here. Um, assure folks that uh, we are here to, to answer questions. Um, you know, it, I, I did to just kind of want to reiterate that you know as part of the ordinance, we had a, a few steps to kind of get through in order to look at eventually filing a permit that was looking at a road use agreement, decommissioning agreement, and economic development agreement. So we did look at those in the fall, but you know we were not ready to, to file our permit immediately after that. We continued to run tests on the ground, uh, make sure we knew where we could place panels and where we couldn't. And so we feel like we have a, a pretty good sense of that now and are, are, are reaching out to confidently uh, folks who we know could be potential uh, neighboring residences of the project. Um, there is a 250 foot setback currently for residences um, as well. And in terms of just safety concerns in general, uh, there's technology built in where you know you can shut off uh, a, a complete panel row um, if, if there were ever to be any danger and we're gonna have a full time operations and maintenance staff on site with a comprehensive uh, emergency response plan with local Delaware County officials, uh, <coughs> if something were to ever arise, but that's a very unlikely situation. These, these panels are very safe. It's a proven, reliable, durable technology 
Panels are built to withstand 140 mile per hour winds, shatterproof glass, they can withstand large hailstorms. Um, and really the, the recycling industry for panels is in its nascent stages here in the US. It's, it's really building up right now as we're seeing more demand. Um, but it is a proven concept and technology in Europe where we've seen more solar technology in the past couple of decades. So it'll get here. Um, it's already starting in a number of states across the US. And that infrastructure will continue to be built up as, as we move along here. So I just wanted to take a little bit of time, um, uh, assure folks we are here to, to answer questions. Uh, we, we really look forward to the opportunity to be a long-term partner with Delaware County, bring millions of dollars of property tax revenue to this county, um, and you know, ultimately help, help this county thrive with uh, you know, improved infrastructure, funding for schools, and um, you know, helping bring homegrown energy uh, to Delaware County, something they can be proud of. Um, so thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next is uh, Kelly Watson. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I'm kind of neutral. I was just wondering if you guys had any thoughts or consideration of uh, local workforce, county residents working on this project, if it does pass and go through? We, we, that up to the company. Yeah, we, we obviously we'd like to see that. That'd be up to the company. Okay, I, I just, that's the only reason I'm here. Thank you. Absolutely. Next is, uh, is it Tim or Jim Nickham? It's Tim Nickham. Uh, I do, would like to second what Mrs. Kirtley said. I'm not going to go over that again. I'm in full agreement with her. Uh, I can tell you there are literally hundreds of people who are concerned about the potential negative effects a large scale solar installation will have for our county. I have personally been contacted by dozens of residents who are extremely concerned about their personal property values. What will that mean for them in the future, particularly the nearer you get to this installation? If your house is surrounded on three sides, I don't care if you have a 200 foot setback or a 500 foot setback. I don't care what kind of fences you have. I don't care what's planted under them. The fact is, from horizon to horizon, you're going to see nothing but solar panels. My work has taken me within a 1,200 mile radius of Muncie over the last 10 years. I've seen solar panels all over the place. And the basic concept is still the same. It's going to drastically alter the landscape of our county. And by making this an accepted use, we're opening up the whole county, not just Gaston, not just Albany, which are the two that we know now are on the table, but this is going to go in everywhere. I would specifically ask that you consider a very strong addition to our ordinance to guarantee property owners that they have some kind of a fair treatment if this affects them personally. I would also ask that we consider if we keep a solar ordinance, let's make it so that it protects as many people as it can, but let's consider not making this an accepted use for farmland. I believe there are much better places to put this. Let's don't make this an accepted use. Let's make this go back to where it needs to follow our tried and true tried and true variance procedures that we have had work for us so many for so many years. Give the people who are directly affected with this a chance to find out about it, make up their minds what they want to do, and give you that feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, David Mock. <coughs> David Mock from Gaston area. Oh, I, the only thing I want to say, oh, uh, you've been, you guys been saying that you've been working on this for what, a year and a half? Am I right? Anybody want to answer? Okay, well, here's what I'm getting at. 
you've been working at a year and a half. You've been seeing, you've been, all you've been hearing is the uh, solar side of it. Okay, we had a meeting at Westdale Saturday, very, very informative meeting. And I've been told there wasn't the first, no county commissioners there, no county council, no planning commissioners, no zoning commissioners, not the first. Anybody from Delaware County representatives was at that meeting, you would thought, it was very, very informative, and you would have thought somebody would have been there at that meeting to take some information in. So I don't know if you guys are hearts are really into it, looking into the information about it, but I really think you need to do a lot of studying on it. And if you had been at that meeting, you could really learn a lot of things. So I don't know why no one was there, but there was nobody there. So, but that's all I got to say. But just please look into the the negatives on it, because you, I don't think you're, I don't think you're listening to any of us. So. There you go. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Susan Dillon. Hello, I'm Susan Dillon. I was at that meeting on Saturday, and there was a lot of very good information presented. I'm here to speak to our elected officials on behalf of our community members. Sometimes decisions have unintended consequences, and hindsight is 2020. And it appears that the way the solar project here that's being considered was rolled out has had unintended consequences of causing division in our community. At the meeting on Saturday, there was a potential solution offered um, <coughs> that would um, open up dialogue and potential compromise that would look out for the interest for all of our communities, all, for both parties, both sides. And that solution was uh, to require, and it was already mentioned, was to require a variance for each individual solar project that's being, that's being considered. That way the interests of all parties can be heard and considered. So I'm asking you to please Listen to the people you serve. Do what you can to nurture cohesiveness and unity because that's the most important thing in our community. It's that cohesive and unified community in which the interests of all are considered and we can grow and we can move forward together. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, there's no one else. That's everyone that signed up. Um, entertain a motion for recess. So moved. I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Mr. Henry. Yes. We're in recess.